Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining me for my annual State of the School Address. It is truly wonderful to be able to gather again in person and to have this opportunity to share highlights of the past year and outline some of the opportunities and challenges ahead. This year, we once again have a printed program that lists the names of individuals who hold leadership positions within the University of Maryland Baltimore, the School of Nursing, and the University of Maryland Medical System. It also highlights honors, awards, and recognition of individuals that have received these since April 1st of last year. At times, rather than reading names, I'll refer you to the information in your program. Today we are live streaming this event for those unable to be present in person this afternoon, and we are also recording it for distribution to our alumni. So I would ask that you hold your applause until the end and simply sit back and enjoy the program. With that, I'd like to begin by acknowledging our colleagues from the senior leadership of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Bruce Gerald, President of the University, and Roger Ward, Provost, Executive Vice President, and Dean of the Graduate School. My fellow deans, Natalie Eddington from the School of Pharmacy, Judy Postmas from the School of Social Work, E. Albert Reese from the School of Medicine, Mark Reynolds from the School of Dentistry, Donald Tobin from the Carey School of Law, and M.J. Tui of the Health Sciences and Human Services Library. Other UMB administrative officers, Gregory Ball, Diane Forbes Berthoud, Scott Bittner, Susan Buzkirk, Stephen Davis, Susan Gillette, James Hughes, Kevin Kelly, Flavius Lilly, Jennifer Lichman, Peter Murray, and Don Rhodes. And our colleagues and partners from the University of Maryland Medical System and the University of Maryland Medical Center. Mohan Santha, President and Chief Executive Officer of the University of Maryland Medical System. Lisa Rowan, Chief Nurse Executive from the University of Maryland Medical System. Bert O'Malley, President and Chief Executive Officer from the University of Maryland Medical Center downtown. Allison Brown, President of the University of Maryland Medical Center Midtown Campus. Karen Doyle, Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services and the Chief Nursing Officer of the University of Maryland Medical Center Downtown. Nate Guyton, Vice President of Patient Care Services and the Chief Nursing Officer from the University of Maryland Medical Center Midtown Campus. And Greg Raymond, Vice President of Nursing and Patient Care Services Downtown and also Co-Chair of UM Nursing. I also want to welcome members of our School of Nursing Board of Visitors and thank them for their dedication to the school. Their names are listed in the program, but in particular, I want to recognize re retired Rear Admiral Elizabeth Niemeyer, the chair of the board, and thank her for her ongoing leadership. The School of Nursing's Alumni Council consists of 27 alumni and four student representatives, all of whom contribute to the school through their time and their talent. Their names are listed in the program, but I would like to recognize Melinda Peoples, the current president of the association, and Ruth J. Lee, the immediate past president. As I mentioned, we are recording this event so that members of our alumni association, more than 23,000 living alumni across 50 states in the District of Columbia, four U.S. territories, and 39 countries can view it on their website. So we're truly a global nursing organization. Special thanks to the administrative and academic leaders of the School of Nursing and to our faculty, our staff, and our students. Although I'm the one standing here this afternoon, I can only do this because of the individual and collective commitment and hard work of many people. We could not possibly accomplish all that we do without everyone's considerable efforts. So thank you for all you do. In January of 2021, the university began work on the strategic plan that will cover the period until June 30th, 2026. This new UMB plan, completed and released in late 2021, informs and guides the individual strategic plans developed by each of the seven schools and the major administrative units of the university. This planning process is a reminder of the ways in which we are one university and how the mission, vision, and goals that we share as a university inform and guide our work as the School of Nursing. As I prepared for this presentation and thought about the content of the videos that you will see during the course of my remarks, I was struck once again by how much our work as a school reflects the overarching mission of our university, which is to improve the human condition 
and serve the public good of Maryland and society at large through education, research, clinical care, and service and also how our School of Nursing mission statement, together with the university statement, fully informs and reflects all that we do. Our mission as a School of Nursing states that we shape the profession of nursing and the healthcare environment by developing leaders in education, research, and practice. As you listen today, I'm sure you'll have a strong sense of how our shared purpose and commitment and the core values that we hold in common shape our individual and collective efforts. Last year, during my virtual state of the school, I took as my theme the image of breaking new ground for a new way forward in light of the many ways in which the pandemic had shaped and challenged us institutionally and as individuals. This year, as we step beyond the pandemic, we are harnessing what we learned, the resiliency that we demonstrated, and our amazing capacity for pivoting and innovating, and we are shaping it into what the new way forward will be. To reflect this, I chose as my theme for this year, innovation and discovery. It is one of the university's core values, and it is the underpinning of all that we do, whether it's teaching, in research and scholarship, in practice or in service. So when I think about innovation and discovery, I think, okay, discovery is where you're finding something that already exists. And when you're innovating, you're creating something new. We innovate and discover when we translate findings from the bench and preclinical models to the community and to patients where we can make a difference in their lives. The School of Nursing innovates by looking at problems as possibilities. We innovate and discover when we are challenged, and there's been no better example than what we've been through for the past two years. I'm doing innovative work across teams that uses technologies to bring ideas to life. I'm doing innovative work that facilitates programming for people no matter where they are, no matter their religion, no matter their race, no matter their gender, no matter their identity. In my lab, we do innovative research covering the discover of pain modulation. We innovate and discover when we work together as colleagues, as professionals, and in simulations when we work with our students. We innovate and discover when we embrace both tried and true and outside the box ideas, strategies, and initiatives. The School of Nursing innovates by using currently designed simulations and adapting them for use online, in class, and as hybrid simulations. We innovate by using our resources to create unique and wonderful learning experiences across different settings and in different ways. One of the critical areas in which we are being challenged to invent new ways of doing things may come as a surprise to some of you. It is in teaching and learning. We have emerged from the pandemic that demanded regular and rapid changes in order to keep teaching and learning on track as we vacated our classrooms. We were fortunate to have faculty who were well versed in teaching online or in virtual environments and to have a strong infrastructure in learning technologies. These skills and abilities are increasingly important as our student population continues to change. We are experiencing the challenge of a new generation of students, the must-discuss Generation Z. Born between 1997 and 2012, the Gen Z cohort is predominant among our entry into practice students, which is significant given that entry into practice students constitute 45% of our total student population of over 2,000 students. Gen Z students bring different expectations and, and, they, and different preferred ways of learning particularly given their lifelong exposure to technology. They have been shaped by smartphones and social media. As learners, they look for regular communication and feedback. They want to understand the value of their education, the why of what they are being taught, and they will not spend time on things that they perceive as unimportant. They are advocates for themselves and others and are not afraid at change challenging authority. They care deeply about the world, including issues of social justice and climate change. As a whole, 49% of Gen Z individuals identify as non-white, and 22% have an immigrant parent. 
Gen Z students require different teaching techniques to help them learn effectively. The pandemic gave us a crash course in supporting these students in their learning. However, the pipeline of Gen Z is long, and our teaching will need to continue to evolve. Our expertise in clinical simulation was a significant strategic strength during the pandemic. Clinical simulation allows students to practice skills and complex procedures in a safe environment and to engage in situations that they might never have the opportunity to experience during a clinical rotation. During the pandemic, we increased our use of simulation and were able to replace in-person clinical activities with new methods of simulating nursing scenarios through virtual patient encounters. As we look ahead to continued statewide competition for clinical sites, the innovative approaches tested during the pandemic, coupled with our outstanding standardized patient program, will help us continue to develop high quality clinical experiences. As we continually enhance our approaches to teaching and learning, we've increased the resources devoted to supporting faculty in the teaching enterprise, both through our long-standing Institute for Educators and with the creation of a new position of an Associate Dean for Faculty Development. We are also continuing our efforts to develop and support clinical faculty throughout Maryland, helping to turn expert clinicians into successful teachers. New thinking about teaching and learning is also needed as we implement the curricular changes required under the recently revised Essentials for Nursing Education. These are the standards that define what constitutes preparation to be a nurse and in turn form the basis for assessing student nurses for licensure. In keeping with the changing nature of healthcare and the need for practice ready nurses, these new standards shift the focus from what one knows to what one is able to do with what one knows. It means that we will be graduating students who require enhanced critical thinking, decision making, and leadership skills. It also requires greater curricular focus on issues such as the social determinants of health, population health, and health equity. We are actually taking AACN, the American Association of Colleges of Nursing's uh, new essentials, and taking that as a blueprint, which is what it's offered as for us to re-envision our curriculum such that we move towards a competency-based approach. So we move away from not just what we are teaching, but what the students can do. I try to help faculty connect with the students in, the, in that new special way. And one way to do that is not to overwhelmingly change everything, but small teaching. Change one thing and see how that works. Uh, not only how the students like it, but how that changes in terms of their learning. I have looked to the best practice recommendations for uh, you know, how to transform the classroom, especially in a time where we need to really look at how we are preparing our future nurses. I often say to them in a stepwise approach, you know, it's not just about what we learn in this classroom, it's about what you carry on into your practice as future nurses. They will be more immersed in experiences that they know how to then meet competencies that are evaluated by more than one faculty and are evaluated over the trajectory of their programs. To kind of meet those new ideas and regulations and requirements, uh, we're doing much more, obviously, with simulation on both campuses. Our standardized patient program has come into a huge play here as students really apply what they're learning in the classroom. Also, we're working more in the community. We're partnering differently with our partners and creating, again, those unique learning experiences that maybe we hadn't thought of before. We will then be able to have our students illustrate competencies in the areas that are important, like policy and health informatics and evidence-based practice and leadership. I think we have a lot to learn. I'm excited about it. And I think we'll learn a lot from each other. In addition to the emergence of Gen Z, our student population is also changing given national changes in the national demographics in Maryland and our local communities to reflect ever greater racial, ethnic, and cultural diversity. Consequently, over the past decade, we have focused increasing attention on diversity, equity, and inclusion as the School of Nursing's values. Our ongoing progress is seen in the growing diversity of our student body and of our faculty and staff. In the fall of 2014, 36% of our students identified as racially or ethnically diverse. And by the fall of 2018, it had reached 48%. 
Most recently, in the fall of 2021, 53% 50 per of our students identified as racially or ethnically diverse. This contrasts to the national average of 33% across undergraduate and graduate nursing programs. An important component of educating a diverse student population is having a diverse faculty that enables all students to see themselves as future nurses and future nurse leaders. The diversity of the School of Nursing's faculty has also steadily increased. In the fall of 2016, 28% of our faculty, defined as all full-time, part-time, appointed faculty in our adjunct faculty, identified as racially or ethnically diverse. By fall of 2021, this percentage had increased to 42%. In the same period, from 2016 to 2021, the diversity of our staff increased from 34% to 47%. In order to create an environment conducive to the learning work and well-being of our diverse students, faculty, and staff, we have taken steps to foster a better understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and what it means for a school of nursing. This uh, included the 2016 appointment of the first Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion on the UMB campus, the growth of our DEI office, and ongoing programming and learning opportunities for faculty, staff, and students around issues such as implicit bias, difficult conversations, and health equity. Our efforts have been recognized nationally for four consecutive years with the Health Professions Higher Education Excellence and Diversity, known as the HEAT Award, from the Insight into Diversity magazine the only national initiative that honors individual institutions for their commitment to diversity and inclusion. Diversification also extends to the nursing diaspora as we incorporate immigrants who are either new to nursing or who bring other healthcare or nursing degrees and experiences from their prior lives. We know that diversifying the, the healthcare workforce, not only racially and ethnically, but also re with respect to sexual preference and gender identification, as well as a host of economic, cultural, and social factors, is an important aspect for building a truly effective and equitable system of health care for all persons. As our student body changes, I believe the student experience also needs to reflect that change. Right now, there are actually significant contributors and collaborators. We have a responsibility to create an environment that represents the students in the world that they come from, the communities that we live in, and the diverse world that exists today. Our students are a microcosm of society. When you have diversity, that allows us to have diversity in what we teach, and what we research, and ideas and the ways we innovate. There is such a culture of inclusivity here at this school. I think it's been really empowering for a lot of students who come from so many different walks of life and so many different experiences. One of the most important factors for increasing diversity in the student body is actually having a diversified faculty core. It's demonstrated that patient outcomes are improved in having nurses or healthcare practitioners that look like the patient population. We need everybody to be culturally aware, to really do diversity, equity, and inclusion well. This ideally will really inch towards minimizing and eradicating these disparities in health that we often talk about. Our patients are diverse and incredibly different, but the care that they deserve and need is the same. It's the very best. And one way that we can do that is by becoming more empathic nurses who can understand our patients that way. Educating today's nursing students requires rethinking how we create an effective learning environment for a new generation and how we ensure the academic progression and success of each student. We have the unique opportunity to leverage the racial, ethnic, and cultural diversity of our student body and of our faculty and staff to better equip our students to deliver high quality, culturally appropriate care that improves health and well-being increases access and promotes health equity. As we prepare the next generation of nurses, we also face the challenge of preparing students to transition from the classroom to the bedside. How to help them become practice ready in a time of rapid change in the overall healthcare system and in the face of ongoing shortages in the nursing workforce. 
We are creating new and innovative models for student learning in the clinical environment, which we hope will also contribute to better and faster incorporation of graduates into the practice setting and improve retention. The state of Maryland is already a national exam exemplar due to our statewide nurse residency program. This requires a residency year, year for newly graduated nurses in acute care hospitals and is designed to address nurse retention by better supporting the transition to practice. Building on prior efforts such as this and ongoing discussions with our practice partners, we just launched two new pilot projects with our nursing colleagues from the University of Maryland Medical System. P3 and ACE are two innovative and new programs that perfectly illustrate the academic practice partnership that we have between the University of Maryland School of Nursing and University of Maryland Medical System. P3 stands for practicum to practice. Our P3 students can, as a third semester student, apply for a job at UMS, be interviewed by that unit manager, offered a job, and begin work as a student nurse. ACE, the Academy of Clinical Essentials, brings together four med surge students and midway through the semester, two additional fundamental students with one clinical instructor who is actually a nurse at one of the University of Maryland Medical System hospitals. The student instructor cohort takes care of four patients that the instructor selects at the beginning of the shift, and the students have a really full, comprehensive, immersive experience. So what we've done is addressed their nursing staff shortage and our need for increased clinical sites and instructors. In the rural areas and in the underserved areas, 80% of the anesthesia providers are CRNAs. With UMMC being our sister hospital, we have looked into how can we bring more CRNAs into this employment. So we have ICU nurses who will apply to our program. And what we first do is as faculty, we go through all the applications and we say, okay, we have 10 ICU nurses who are eligible to come into our program. We then give those names to UMMC and they interview those 10 and they decide how many they would like to pay tuition for. And those students come over, they do the program for three years full time, cannot work. And then they go back as a CRNA to UMMC and they work there. The collegial relationships between our nurses at our hospitals and the School of Nursing faculty have been remarkable. And I think that what we will ultimately see is that patient care as the bottom line will improve. As we develop projects such as those in the video, it is a reminder of our role in developing Maryland's nursing workforce. With more than 2,000 students, we produce a critical percentage of the state's future nurses. This creates opportunities to build new models that can be used by other nursing programs in Maryland and nationally. We are already seeing great interest from other Maryland healthcare systems in initiatives that combine enhanced clinical education with nursing workforce preparedness and recruitment. We are fortunate to have strong and productive collaborative partnerships between academic nursing and clinical practice. In addition to projects focusing on the education of our students and their successful incorporation into the workforce, we are also engaged in programs to improve the delivery of care to better meet the needs of patients and their families within the hospital setting and in the community. We are uniquely positioned for this given our long-standing partnership with the University of Maryland Medical Center which was formalized in 2007 with the creation of UM Nursing by then Dean Janet Allen and Dr. Lisa Rowan, who was then the Chief Nursing Officer for the Medical Center. UM Nursing is now expanding to include other institutions within the University of Maryland Medical System. In addition to fostering the ongoing education and development of nursing students and practicing nurses, we are leveraging this partnership to bring academic and clinical nursing together to test ideas and develop projects that improve practice. The UM Nursing Care Coordination Implementation Collaborative, supported by NSP2 program, is a joint effort between the University of Maryland School of Nursing and the University of Maryland Medical Center. 
The CCIC project is especially important because it is a proof of concept. It gives us a way of knowing that the education that's being provided, not only to our students, but also the continuing education for practicing nurses, makes an actual difference in the outcome of patients. Nowadays, the complexity is increasing, and they are really well positioned to coordinate complex care. Typically in schools of nursing, the curriculum focuses more on inpatient and critical care, and rightfully so. The care coordination piece of what we do for our patients is really important, especially since patients hopefully spend way more time outside of the hospital than in. And our nurses and other staff are, are really focused on keeping patients out of the hospital and making sure we can connect them to care and navigate all of the, the difficulties of insurance and different specialties and referral processes and how to manage their symptoms without resorting to go to the emergency department. It's critical to partner with the University of Maryland School of Nursing because the academic practice partnership really is the strength of this program. It brings the academic side in Dr. Mills and Insham and the other faculty members of the academic portion of that partnership and their knowledge of developing education and delivery of education into the practice side, which is all of our leaders in the practice area, and how do we then translate that education into actual practice together? And so that partnership really is critical in developing a very, very strong program that and then translates into the delivery of true care coordination that's meaningful to our patients and to our nurses. To maximize their impact, our nurses must practice to the full extent of their education and preparation to achieve our triple aim of health. So now I, I really think that we have to be one nursing. And I do think that our school is setting the exemplar. As we look ahead, we have remarkable opportunities within the framework of our UM Nursing Partnership for collaborative research and discovery that can improve the delivery of care. Our school has a rich legacy of research and of developing nurse researchers. Our PhD program launched in 1979 and was one of only a few nursing PhD programs in the nation at that time, and it has continued to evolve. Over the past several years, we have strengthened the diversity of our PhD pipeline and have seen a 37% growth in students in the entering cohorts from underrepresented populations. Our program is currently the most diverse R1 and R1 or R1 equivalent nursing PhD program in the United States. Nursing Science Today is very much about improving the human condition. It is committed to inquiry that develops a body of knowledge to advance nursing practice, shape health policy, and impact the health of individuals. Nursing science is driven by the vision of optimizing the health and well-being of populations and brings a holistic perspective to bear on studying individuals, families, and communities. It is inherently interdisciplinary and translational and reflects a commitment to providing a rigorous scientific basis for the practice of nursing and to continually advance the practice through ongoing research. We often refer to this translational work as moving from bench to bedside. And like much of nursing research, the ultimate goal is to move from bench to bedside to community in order to have a positive and lasting impact on the day-to-day -day well-being of individuals. For the School of Nursing, research takes many forms, ranging from bench-based investigations that provide insights into the basic mechanisms of pain with the goal of discovering how to better manage chronic pain to community-based projects that seek to discover how to combat social isolation for young families in West Baltimore and address a key factor in the social determinants of health. A few examples include projects to expand understanding of the potential role of virtual reality in pain modulation, developing systems of function-focused care to optimize the health of older individuals and decrease behavioral issues in those with dementia, create a national network of researchers and global health practitioners to strengthen community capacity to address issues of health equity, and support and empower older cancer survivors through digital technology. 
Nurse researchers really look at human conditions as the whole person. Much of nursing research involves health promotion, disease prevention, and symptom management. The other thing that we do a lot here is to support interdisciplinary research, and the university has come a long way in this area. Having the collaboration and support of other nurse researchers and other researchers here in the school and in the university, it's so important. As an early stage investigator, you need to have the time to develop your program of research. I'm very fortunate to have a department chair and dean who see the importance of making sure that I'm set up for success. The most amazing thing to me is our department of research. From budget support, from getting the grant in, from oversight to making sure you have everything there, it's phenomenal, and I believe it's much more than many schools have. I love working with PhD students and supporting them in their research, and I think one of the things that the school does really well is they match PhD students up with faculty who have similar interests. To be able to share with them the experiences that I've had and the program that I've built so they can see what that looks like for their future is really important to me. So I think the reason that we mentor and provide research training for our students is so that they can move forward and improve the care for populations that they find their passion lies in. Nursing research informs healthcare in general, not just uh, nurses, but all individuals who work with patients in healthcare systems. We are justly proud of the research work going on at the School of Nursing, and I would encourage those of you who are interested to explore the research section of our website and read some of the more than 25 profiles of School of Nursing researchers and their projects. One measure of our research efforts is our national ranking in terms of the aggregate dollar value of research awards from the National Institutes of Health. For fiscal year 2021, the School of Nursing ranked 13th among public schools of nursing and 19th among all schools of nursing in receipt of NIH awards. In our next strategic plan, we will maintain a focus on conducting high impact research and scholarship that improves health outcomes. Under the recently completed plan, we increased our support for seasoned, early stage, and novice researchers through our Office of Research and Scholarship. We now provide expert support on working with human subjects and in institutional review, review board processes, guidance and technical assistance from statisticians, and we actively engage with important resources such as the university's Institute for Clinical and Translational Research. In addition, the leadership and staff in our grants and contracts office works closely with faculty on the technical elements of their grant applications and provides superb support in ongoing grants management. We have also broadened the engagement of our research-focused faculty from across the school in the PhD program and enhanced the resources and support available to PhD students at all stages in their studies. As we look ahead to another year and the early stages of our 2022-2026 strategic plan, we are indeed developing new initiatives that will shape the profession of nursing and the healthcare environment by developing leaders in education, research, and practice. As always, we are doing this in the context of our commitment to improve the human condition and serve the public good. And you can be quite certain that our work will engage all of us in ongoing innovation and discovery. So thank you so much for being here today and for all that you do to contribute to our school and to our university. Special thanks to those who work closely with me to develop this year's program. Jordana Signeri, Assistant Dean for Marketing and Communications, Deborah Prout, Special Assistant to the Dean, and our intrepid IT team, Garrett Lowing and Andy Verbus. As we conclude today's program, I would ask my senior UMB senior administrative colleagues to come to the stage for our annual photograph. And to all of you who were able to join us in person this year, we were hesitant to plan a reception, but I would invite you to stop at the table in the lobby and pick up a little goodie bag with a treat to go. So thank you for being here today and for your many contributions to the work of the School of Nursing.